G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Well, Bitcoin just couldn't get over the mark. So I got to around sort of 50,000 and it has rolled over. I did sort of, you know, somewhat suspect that this might happen. But at the same time, it wouldn't have surprised me if it had gone up. But it's just really stuck at this kind of 50,000. And I do think we're probably going to trade around here for a little while now. I think it's going to take a bit. But in saying that, I saw a tweet that a whole stack of uh, Tether got printed like... I don't know, half a, half a billion dollars or something worth of tether was printed. And usually when that happens, it means there's you know a lot of money about to come into the space. But we'll just have to wait and see anyway. We'll continue on and we'll have a look. Still sitting around that kind of 1.5 you know, trillion dollar mark. So again, I think it was $500 billion uh, was printed, something like that. So you know, half a trillion dollars worth of tether. So that could be getting ready to come into the market. Again, we don't know and they could be waiting for lower prices, but generally when Tether starts to fire up, the market starts to fire up. So, you know, we'll, we'll just wait and see. Uh, again, you know, Bitcoin at 47,000 is not too bad unless you bought it at 58,000. That's when it really sort of hurts. But again, hopefully you've done your research. All right, Bitcoin dominance still sitting under 60%. ETH dominance again down as well, sitting uh, under 12%, uh, you know, 11.4%. Gas prices have come down, which is really good. And I think that because I think what is going on there with the gas prices being low is it's not people just simply leaving Ethereum because of the high gas prices. I think it is simply people on the sidelines at the moment. There's a lot of indecision in the market. I wouldn't be surprised if we kind of have a bit of a flash crash coming at some stage. And again, I think maybe we go down to sort of 40000 maybe even into you know the $39,000, $38,000 range. I do think it's going to be a flash crash if we come back down there. And then I think the market really starts to pump back up. But again, this is all just, a, you know, me, you know, taking a bit of a guess, really. I'd, but there's no one out there that really knows exactly what's going to happen. This is just what I think might happen. And again, never financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But let's have a look. Has anything really pumped? Because we've got a bit of red going on there. I'm sure there's some things that have pumped. Curve Dow has done all right. Uh, Rweave, not even sure what that is. Energy Web Token Engine is doing quite well, which is really good. NEM, Synthetics Network, slowly but surely making its way back up. Uh, I'm not quite at the price that uh, I bought a lot of Synthetics Network. I got it more around the $23, $24 mark, but that was bought with profits that I took from other coins. So again, I'm not really too worried. It wasn't fresh cash. I did buy some Synthetics Network with fresh cash and I think I picked it up at about sort of $21. So I'm up just a little bit. Uh, and again, I really like Synthetics Network token, but I do feel like I might be getting to the point where I've kind of got enough Synthetics Network token and I might start looking at some lower projects uh, that are a little bit more down the ladder. Maybe even some that are out of the top 100. Uh, Secret Network token, I really like what they're doing. I'm not sure where they are. I think they are still outside the top 100. Uh, P Network, I did buy some more P Network the other day. Uh, and, and that might be where I start to put some funds now because I think the ones in the top 100, they're just going to stay stagnant for a while at the moment. We need something big to happen with Bitcoin. It's got to get on a run before anything else does. And I think, you know, the better bets out uh, at the moment might be outside uh, of the top 100. I generally don't invest too much in coins outside the top 100. I generally don't invest in coins outside of the top 50, let alone uh, the top 100. But there are a couple I like. So again, P Network, I don't mind them. Uh, Secret Network, I don't mind them. Uh, and I'd have to go back and look through uh, some of Refinance, I put some money into that. There's a lot of talk about whether it was a scam and all the rest of it. Uh, from what I read, it seems like it's not. But again, it has sort of dropped. I've lost about 20%. It fluctuates 15 to 20% from my initial buy in at refinance. So yeah, we'll wait and see. All right, so there's some good gains there. We've got some double digit gains, uh, not too bad at all. Theta Network, so doing well. Uh, reserve uh, taken, and again, uh, Synthetics, Kasama, but look, that's still down uh, for the seven days. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Same with Aave, Chainlink uh, starting to make a bit of a, a, a move. Again, it's still down though, so we'll have to wait and see if that BlockFi news has sort of been part of it. Uh, all right, 
What's lost? Has anything gone down in the last 24 hours? I'm sure there's going to be some. Yep, so there we go. Phantom, of course, is going to have a pullback. I mean, it had such a massive sort of rise. Uh, Pancake swap. Uh, Solana. Look, these losses aren't really too bad. Sort of single-digit losses. I mean, you can look at Voyager. It's down 5.5% in 24 hours, but still up 5% for the week. So again, that means, you know, a lot of things are just kind of traveling sideways at the moment. And that really is a market that's indecision. And what can happen in a market that's indecisive is it can either just randomly pump out of nowhere, all of a sudden people get bullish again because they can see that it's just kind of plateaued. It's not dipping, it's just kind of traveling sideways. But on occasions at least, and I spoke about this just before, is what can happen is there's indecision you have a bit of a flash crash and then it just goes on a big mad pump so that's really what i'm waiting to see here. even i'm not sure what's going to happen at the moment i did think with some of the bullish news that we were going to have a pump and i still think a pump is coming i just think we might have some more downside before the pump comes so again i'm just guessing at the moment uh, and you know I like to think of it as an educated guess, not just a random guess, but it's just from what I'm seeing on the charts. I mean, you can look at this, it's up and down, up and down, it's all over the place. All of these charts are quite similar. It's just, you know, you can draw a line through the middle and that's the average price and it's up above it for a while, it's down below it and then, then it's trading. And that's what I see at the moment. This is an indecisive market, at least for the last week. And again, these, the gains that we saw, nothing too spectacular and the losses that we saw nothing too spectacular that really is an indecisive market so just beware we could have a bit of a flash crash but i think if we do it's all just going to get bought up pretty quickly and there will be another leg up but the flash crash might not happen uh that i think again half a billion dollars worth of tether that was printed uh will likely come into the market fairly quickly particularly if there is a flash crash uh, i can see that are getting into the market quite quick and again i don't think the flash crash will be that bad we might just you know bitcoin might come down into the 39 38 000 mark uh, i would it, it'd be a wick i don't think we'd have a closing candle uh, i already said this before i think we might get a closing candle around the 43 42 000 mark sometime but i do expect uh, march to be bullish i just think maybe the first week to 10 days could be a little bit bearish i think after that it starts to turn bullish again. And I've got some stories that'll uh, go along with that. So let's move on. All right, here's the chart. So as I said, this was the downtrend. We did break out of the downtrend. It was quite a big move though. We've got to remember that's 45,000 all the way up to basically, you know, nearly 50,000. So it's retraced a little bit, pulled back to its kind of mean average, 47. That seems uh, fair enough. And again, we've got lots of confluence around this $47,000 mark, really sort of $48,000 mark. So this is just a little bit of, you know, what was resistance becoming support. So we'll have to wait and see whether this holds or again, do we have a bit of a flash crash and sort of maybe wick down to about here? Again, I can definitely see we may be closed down here, like I said yesterday. We break out, roll over, maybe come back and sort of test this line, and it might be even here uh, around the $42,000 mark, so maybe tomorrow or the day after. But again, there's no guarantees. It could be just we start to make our next move up. No one really knows, but that is something I'm looking at. I'm always, I'm always thinking what can happen on the upside and what can happen on the downside. What I think is more realistic, what I think is more likely, and then I act accordingly. And for me at the moment, I just think it's an indecisive market, so I'm not really making any moves. I bought a few altcoins the other day. Uh, some have gone up uh, and some have come down a little bit, and that's all right. But with Bitcoin itself, I'm not really looking to buy any Bitcoin unless it gets down to around this $42,000 range or lower. I'm pretty happy to just kind of sit with what I have at the moment. Uh, anything above sort of 42,000 for me, uh, I'm happy to just have that cash sitting on the side for another sort of rainy day. If Bitcoin should go below sort of $42,000, I absolutely will buy some. But again, that may happen all too fast and I may miss it. But if I get the chance to buy Bitcoin at $42,000 or below, then that's exactly what I will be doing. But anything above that, I'm happy to just leave my cash sitting on the side uh, for another rainy day. Because something I'm thinking of is, 
you know, there's a lot of exuberance at the moment, but we've stalled at that kind of fifty thousand dollar mark, and our old high was twenty thousand. We got to forty thousand, stalled a little bit, got to fifty eight thousand, which is nearly sixty thousand, definitely stalled. I think it's in increments of twenty that we're going to see stall marks. So I think maybe we get back to fifty eight thousand, we have a bit of a pullback again, but then we sort of start to go up to. I think we get around the $80,000 mark and we stall again. I think it is going to be those increments of 20 and it's not going to be exactly. So again, 58,000 was the stall mark, not quite 60,000. Again, maybe we get up towards uh, 80,000. It might happen at 76 or $74,000 that we stall. And then again, you know, once we get to around here, this is where we might see the big 30, 40% corrections where we go from 70,000 and really come back down and maybe test you know 40 50 sort of thousand dollars so again we got a bit of a confluence here at around sort of the fifty thousand dollar mark so it wouldn't surprise me i'm not saying it's going to happen i'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me if it did happen uh and again we'll just have to wait and see but that's things that i'm looking for at the moment i'm not buying any bitcoin i want it to come to 42 or below before uh, i'm happy to buy bitcoin i'd rather be putting my money into uh, some other altcoins at the moment or simply having cash sitting on the side, which I do. All right, let's move on. Now we get to the stories, and there's some pretty good ones. All right, so I really thought Bitcoin Cash was pretty much dead, but you know, when you think something is pretty much dead, other than you hear that it is dead, you know, there's some cataclysmic thing that's happened to cause it to be dead, that's generally not a bad time to sort of invest in something. Now, I'm not buying any Bitcoin Cash, but maximum uh, opportunity comes when there's sort of maximum risk so when something feels like it's dead and buried but there's no you know news saying that there was a fault in the code or that it is dead and buried that's generally not a bad time to sort of get in again never financial advice just my personal opinion but let's read on on march the 2nd 2021 2021 the average fee on ethereum network costs around 0.00.0083 eth in gas or around sort of $13. Uh, and again, if you're only doing small transactions, then that may be more than what you're trying to do. Transaction fees of this caliber, caliber have dampened Ethereum-based decentralized finance, definitely has, applications and Web3 platforms. On February 23rd, however, crypto proponents were introduced to an alternative solution called Mowing Chain. The Mowing Chain project aims to provide the same benefits as Ethereum 2.0 scaling solutions, but with help from Bitcoin Cash Network. All right, that is very, very interesting. Again, I really thought Bitcoin Cash was pretty much sort of, you know, not dead in the water, but, you know, had kind of died off and that only had a small, uh, you know, kind of network happening for it. Hadn't heard about anything big coming. So look, this may be something that could uh, boost up Bitcoin Cash uh, price and, you know, just bring them back from sort of, you know, the doldrums. Again, I have not heard much about Bitcoin Cash in a while. So Bitcoin Cash people, look out. You might get a bit of a price rise here. Now, Unibright, oh, this project has, you know, I've stuck with it. I did sell a little bit for a small profit, uh, but it really just kind of just traveled sideways and downwards actually for a long time. At times, I was down nearly 50% on Unibright. But anyway, it sounds like things might finally starting be starting to happen for Unibright. So Unibright, Unibright price rallied to a new all-time high over partnerships uh, and its base ledger white paper unveiling DeFi staking. So finally, it is starting to have a move. Sold as one of the next technological breakthroughs that will revolutionize the current digital landscape and usher in a new era of decentralization, business, and corporations have already shown immense interest in how blockchain technology can be integrated into their operations to help save money and increase efficiency. So that is kind of the premises why I bought into Unibright in the first place. Uh, it was very early on when I got back into crypto and I didn't do much chart uh, analysis. Analysis. If I had it, I would have seen that I was buying in uh, at a peak and I could have picked it up at a lot better price. But look, you know, I didn't buy in at the best price, but it is still up, you know, almost 100% from when I did buy. So I can't pl complain with that. And I did sell some for a profit. Haven't got my money back, but, oh, excuse me, I'll keep going. 
I am in profit and I have made some money. So look out for people inside Unibright, uh, not inside Unibright, who have invested in Unibright. Uh, there could be big things to come. It definitely has been a slow mover for me at least. All right, some Litecoin news. Litecoin is trading at a 18,000% premium via Grayscale's Litecoin Trust. But why? That is the question. And I did think investors were going to get into Litecoin uh, very heavily at some stage. Particularly the institutional investors. There's still a, you know millions more Litecoin to be mined uh, so they can get in and build a position uh, nice and early. It is faster than Bitcoin. It's very similar to Bitcoin. That doesn't mean it's going to replace Bitcoin, but it seems like uh, what I thought would happen uh, has happened. And again, Litecoin uh, hasn't been one of my best movers, but I de have definitely made money. Uh, I was able to sell a quarter of my Litecoin to make my initial investment back. So I've still got three quarters of my uh, Litecoin investment there. It's basically the moon bag. And I have, I don't know, probably a third of my uh, Litecoin not quite a third, just a little bit under, uh, but with my BlockFi account earning interest. So can't complain. Investors looking to gain Litecoin exposure using traditional equities are willing to pay a premium of more than 18,000%. Uh, sorry, 1,800%, not 18,000. 1,800% uh, to buy it via Grayscale Litecoin Trust. There we go. All right, so we go down here. Grayscale Litecoin Trust aggressively ramp, ramped up accumulation in February, buying at a rate equal to 80% of new Litecoin being mined during the period. So there you go. There was some interest in it. Uh, what I thought would happen has happened. Whether this will continue to happen or not, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. All right, NFTs. Avagotchis sell out in under one minute as NFT euphoria continues. So I spoke about this yesterday. The network was all blocked up and basically hardly any, hardly any had sold. Well, that has changed. After a string of delays related to congestion on the Ethereum network blockchain, the Avagotchi non-fungible tokens have hit the open market where they stayed for not even a full minute. The Avagotchi project attempts to create digital collectibles with real value backing uh, them through an integration with Aave and its A tokens, interest bearing representations of, of funds supplied to the decentralized finance protocol. While the Avagotchis are designed to incorporate some gaming and collection elements to them, inspired by the hand, uh, handheld Tamagotchi devices popular in the late 90s and early 2000s, they are also an experiment of uh, tying digital collectibles to real value. So that may have been why the fees uh, skyrocketed a little bit yesterday uh, and again that's pretty bullish considering they sold out in a minute uh, I didn't buy any uh, I wasn't even really thinking about it but now hearing about this I kind of wish I had of isn't that always the way right polka dot based synthetic asset platform attracts 1.6 million uh, in funding so there you go uh, that's most likely going to be uh, SNX competitor a synthetics asset trading platform says it has secured 1.64 million in funding from top venture capital firms following a successful strategic financing round. A decentralized synthetic asset uh, insurance protocol built on Substrate says it has secured 1.64 million from prominent blockchain venture capitalists. Shadows Network, a trading flat platform based on Polkadot, is wrapping up its strategic financing round. And it says it is ready to step out from the shadows and into the DeFi world. So again, this will be a synthetics network uh, competitor, no doubt. Um, could uh, be something that uh, could see some price gains. But again, just be careful when it first comes out, it can have a really big pump and then it dumps off. So sometimes it's better to wait but that doesn't always happen. So if this is something you're interested in, uh, have a look into it. I may look into this myself. I'm still a big synthetics fan, uh, but you know, again, we're looking at an opportunity here. Uh, it's a competitor uh, and it can probably cover up some of the ground and look, in the end, it could end up being better than synthetics network. I find that hard to believe at the moment. I just don't know enough about them. And Synthetics Network, I am super bullish on them uh, and everything they do. Uh, and they've got more things to come out. Again, they're adding more tokens to the network all the time. Once Layer 2 finally gets right across the entire board, then I think the upside for Synthetics is massive. Uh, and as I said, uh, I may have to look at, you know, uh, 
that I have enough of a position in synthetics. But if the whole layer two thing starts to happen really fast, then I, I think I'll probably have to buy some more synthetics. But this is something I'm definitely going to look at. Similar kind of thing, but on the polka dot, net, polka dot network. But again, synthetics is still my sort of number one pick for that whole space and probably my number one pick uh, in altcoins in general, in all fairness. All right. DaVinci, DaVinci, <laughs> DaVinci Capital reportedly requests $100 million from tele uh, Telegram for Ton's failure. So a large investor in Telegram's uh, failed open network, has, Ton, has reportedly requested $100 million in compensation from the company. Otherwise, otherwise, the investor DaVinci Capital has warned taking legal action against the messaging platform. So yeah, there was a lot of talk about Ton and everything and it went really bad and someone wants their money back to be compensated so very very interesting and you know we'll see how telegram does after that i i tried telegram for a while there was just so many scams on there uh, i just stopped using it uh, that's just me personally uh, yeah it was just too much for me all right moving on so u.s house uh, passes 1.9 trillion COVID 19 relief package that's a fourteen hundred dollar uh, direct provisions uh, check is included in it. So once this happens, I do think you're going to see a lot of fourteen hundred dollar uh, investments made into cryptocurrencies. Now, this is over in America. I'm not from America. I'm in Australia. But if it was happening in Australia, oh, I cannot stop you. Only excuse me. Early in the morning for me. All right. I would say if you're getting a check. Don't put it on crypto unless it's money that you don't need. If you're lucky enough that you don't really need that fourteen hundred to live, you know, then do what you like with it. But if you need that fourteen hundred to pay bills and food and all the rest of it, that's where this should go. But now moving on from that, uh, sage advice I would call it. I do think a number of people are going to put this uh, into cryptocurrencies. Uh, it was done uh, last year uh, and. Who knows what that $1,400 would be worth now? Uh, most likely probably doubled or tripled if you put it into the right thing. But again, please, I don't recommend doing that. You know, the, that money is supposed to be there, you know, to help you live. Uh, you know, if you're in the fortunate enough position that you're getting the money anyway and you don't need it to live, uh, investing is probably not a bad thing to do with it. Whether that's into cryptocurrencies uh, is, you know, something for you to make up your own mind. Now, some of the notable parts of the bill include increased funding for vaccine distribution in schools, direct funding to state and local governments, and a $1,400 check to Americans making less than $75,000 annually. While this aid is desperately needed by the American people, it brings up larger points about the direction the financial system is headed. So yes, they are just going to printing money randomly and I'm not sure when it's ever going to stop. You know, There's a lot of talk about whether it can stop you know, it may be just something that has to continue uh, being done for, you know, the foreseeable future until we move to a whole new system as, you know, the fiat's just not going to uh, last. It never has and most likely never will. If all the others have failed, I don't see why suddenly, you know, the US dollar or whatever system they move us onto will be any different if it's still something that can just be printed, you know, ad hoc or, you know, when they require it. Right. Chili's, so sports token uh, startup Chili's invests 50 million in US expansion. Chili's is heading for the US. The startup which issues tokens to sports fans in return for rewards is investing 50 million in expanding its business to the US market and announced today. Uh, CEO uh, Al Alexandre Dreyfus told Decrypt that with upcoming new partners and growth of our ecosystem this summer, the firm anticipates a five-fold increase in fan tokens on its platform. Uh, so uh, I don't even know how to say that, dot .com this year. Uh, look, I actually think this is going to be really big. I, I think this is something that I might have to look into. Uh, I heard about it, just, you know, wasn't really on my radar, but at the moment... Yeah, like, like I'm a massive sports fan and I know people like to buy up, you know, sports tokens and all the rest of it, particularly if there's rewards and things like that. Uh, Chili's is now on my radar and I may have to look at building a position in it, but I'll have to check the charts. If it's had a big massive pump, then I'm obviously uh, going to, you know, do the smart thing and just wait for a pullback. 
All right, Thailand. So great news for people from Thailand. So Thailand SEC backtracks on crypto trading restrictions. Now they had some restrictions that I think really would have uh, you know, hurt the people who needed this the most. Thailand Securities and Exchange Commission has backtracked on a proposal that would have required cryptocurrency investors to have a minimum annual income of 1 million baht or $33,000 following a public backlash. That basically means the rich over in Thailand. You know, there's not too many people making $33,000 or more in Thailand. According to the Bangkok Post, the SEC has stated that the draft proposal was intended to judge public sentiment. Well, they've got their answer then. The proposal would have required would-be crypto investors to have two years experience of trading cryptocurrencies, stocks or futures, and have either 1 million baht in annual personal income or either a net worth of 10 million baht, which is $330,000 for an investment portfolio of, portfolio of 5 million baht. They would have also they would also have to score above 80% in a crypto knowledge test administered by exchanges. Look, there's some of that that I think is good. You know, it's you know trying to protect some of uh, the people, but it's also you know not protecting people and making it so only you know highly educated, well-paid people are able to uh, invest in that. And again, there is some upside to that. That yes, we want people to be educated, but you know it's also meaning that people who d never got the you know top class education and don't have great jobs can be you know prevented from maybe making life changing money. And it's only maybe there's you know there's as much chance that they could lose everything if they. Uh, don't have, uh, you know, if they didn't have a good education and if they just simply don't understand it, then they can lose a lot of money as well. But hopefully, you know, one would like to think that, you know, some of the impoverished would be able to get in uh, and make some life-changing life wealth and get themselves out of the situation that they're in. The news sparked a public backlash with crypto advocates taking to social media to argue that the move would exclude low and middle income individuals from the opportunity to invest in cryptocurrencies. And I agree with that. Just because they're making not a lot of money doesn't mean they aren't educated and couldn't make uh, great decisions. And these are the people that would really need crypto. You know, And again, I need to be careful how I say that. They need it if they can make the right decisions but they really don't need it if they end up making the wrong decisions. And that's just the way markets are in general. So I do think that some of this was, you know, trying to protect uh, people, but I think, you know, some of it was also making sure that the rich stay rich and the poor stay poor. All right, PayPal. So we know they've been getting in the cryptocurrency space. Seems like they're getting more involved. PayPal is said to be in the in the process of buying uh, Curve, a technology firm that powers the secure storage of cryptocurrencies, according to three sources familiar with the situation. Israeli news outlets, uh, Cal Calist, hopefully I said that right, reported Tuesday that Curve was being sold for being between 200 million and 300 million without naming the buyer. PayPal uh, is buying Curve for $500 million, a source from within the digital asset custody space told Coindesk on Monday. From where I'm hearing it, I'm pretty sure it's true. So just a rumour at the moment, but you know, generally uh, a lot of these kind of rumours turn out to be true. So there we go. All right, more institutional investors jumping into Bitcoin leaves less to go around uh, data shows. So $4 million, that's roughly how much Bitcoin is circulating freely right now blockchain data shows. The number has been getting a little smaller with each passing month over the last year. It's the assessment of Glassnode, an analysis firm that tracks black coin, uh, black coin, blockchain data. The pattern suggests that the ever-decreasing supply of Bitcoin available to buy and sell might lead to a price surge as more institutional investors embrace the largest cryptocurrency as an investment. Yet this wouldn't surprise me. I think it probably is happening. No guarantees though, it's hard to know because they're all buying at OTC. All right, institutions are making bullish bets on Bitcoin rallying to 75K by May or even higher. All right, institutional traders look to be positioning for a Bitcoin price rally to 75,000 and beyond in the coming months according to options market data. On Monday, some block uh, traders took bull case spreads at 75 to 100,000 strike call options, expiring on May 28th via over-the-counter trading and settlement desk paradigm 
Swiss-based uh, options analytics platform Levitas told Coindesk. These could be institutions betting that Bitcoin will hit at least $75,000 by this summer. Yep, I think that's exactly what they've done and it wouldn't surprise me. I'm not sure if it happens by May. Uh, I, I definitely think it could, uh, but definitely sort of, you know, over the summer period, it wouldn't surprise me. So I'm thinking again around sort of, June, July, I think we'll see a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin. I think when we get close to a hundred thousand, there's going to be a huge sell off somewhere around there. Might not be exactly a hundred thousand, and look, it might even come after a hundred thousand. But I think somewhere in sort of the nervous nineties is what we like to call it. Uh, and, and in cricket over here in Australia, when you get to the nervous nineties, you're trying to make a hundred a century, uh, and quite often batters don't. Uh, they get out for ninety something. So <laughs> a cricket analogy. Moving on. I think the same could come with Bitcoin trying to get to 100,000. I get, to, I think we get to the nervous 90s, probably a fairly hefty sell-off uh, in the 90s before we then have our last big sort of push uh, again where maybe we see Bitcoin go from, you know, that $100,000 mark up into the two $300,000 mark where people are thinking it uh, will happen. That's what I suspect will happen. Uh, and, you know, I'll probably likely take a little bit of profits around this $100,000 mark. It won't be at $100,000. It'll be in the 90s, thereabouts. But look, in saying that, maybe uh, it happens long before even the 90s. It gets to eighty nine, eighty eight thousand. 88000 That's the problem. None of us ever really know, and we'll just have to wait and see. But I will be nervous uh, in the sort of the $90,000 bracket. Once we start getting above $94,000, $95,000 bracket, I will be making sure that I have cash on the sides and I will have taken some profits in all fairness to wait and see what happens, whether we you know, do go over that 100000 and you know push well beyond it. Time will tell. I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you think we're going to make seventy five to 100000 by May? Because that's when these uh, kind of expire. Uh, I'm going to go out and say I think we make 75000 I do think that's achievable. By the end of May, uh, I think uh, 75000 is achievable. Whether it happens or not, though, I don't know. I guess time will tell. We'll have to wait and see. All right, that's it for me. So again, I do think, you know, just beware. I think Bitcoin can still come down from here. It's not just simply going up. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Bitcoin wick come down into the $38,000, $39,000 range. And again, it wouldn't surprise me if I see Bitcoin have a daily sort of candle close in the $42,000 mark. I'm not saying it will happen. I'm just keeping that uh, in mind as a possible uh, a possible outcome. But again, there was a Twitter feed that I saw. I think there was about half a billion dollars uh, worth or $500 billion, half a trillion dollars, something like that, something crazy worth a tether was printed. So... I'm expecting that there's probably going to be a big move, but it might not happen until Bitcoin comes down a little bit. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. A bit hard to be on that gain train at the moment, but there were gains out there, so if you got them, good on you, and I'll see you next time.